I'm Anna Du, author of Microplastics and Me, and today we're making eggs! And I love chickens. So behind me there are a couple of free pallets from that I got from Craigslist and I'm going to turn them into a chicken coop. But before we can put the chicken in the coop, we have to first hatch them. So today I'm going to be building an incubator with you guys. Over here I have two different types of light bulbs. This is the incandescent light bulb that was used in the past and this is the modern day equivalent which is much more energy efficient. In the past few years the government has been funding projects to replace all of these light bulbs with these. And the reason is because these light bulbs are incredibly inefficient with their energy use. Over 98% of the energy put into it becomes irradiated as heat. Now, while this might not be very good for the environment, it is very good for chicken incubators, which is why I'm going to be using this. This is the box that all these chickens are going to hatch in. In order to make sure that the entire project is low cost and biodegradable, it's going to be made out of cardboard. Now, over here is the fan. And this fan is used to evenly distribute heat across the entire incubator. And this is the light, which is used to generate the heat. Now up here, I have the Arduino Uno. This Uno is connected to the relay, which can handle high power, including AC, which is why it's connected to this AC light bulb. Now this Uno also has a temperature sensor, which is used to detect when the heat is safe enough for the chicks to hatch in. Down here, I have a computer. This computer is connected to a thermocouple, which is very accurate, and that's why it's being used to confirm the accuracy of the temperature sensor connected to the Arduino. This is all to make sure that these happy little eggs can hatch safely. Now all the links for the fritzing files and for the code can be found in the description box below. This is a takeout box that I just had lying around. I always save my takeout boxes because I'm always able to reuse it one way or another. I'm going to use this in order to mount the Arduino on the incubator. I'm going to plug this in to see if all the systems are working. It works! As many of you know, I've been working on a project to identify where microplastics are located on the ocean floor. And I, one of my methods for doing this is by using infrared. This is because plastics are very sensitive to infrared. So what I have over here is a type of plastic called mylar, and mylar is coated by a very thin layer of metal, and this allows it to reflect more light and heat. This works very similar to something that's going on in our world right now. Let's say this is our world. Here are the continents, and this is the atmosphere. Now let's say this is our sun. The sun is heating up the surface of the earth using electromagnetic waves, and this heat is being retained in the atmosphere as infrared. This is what we call the greenhouse effect, and it's causing the entire world to warm up. In the beginning, when I was first designing this incubator, I wanted to have a much smaller box, which is why based on my calculations, I only needed a 60 watt light bulb. However, now I've decided to expand, which means that I'm going to need a light bulb with a much higher wattage. I'm also going to use mylar in order to keep in the heat. That's my
I'm using the Arduino and the relay in order to control when the light inside of here turns on and off. When the temperature goes below 98 degrees, the light will turn on, and when the temperature increases over 101 degrees, then the light will turn off. And keep in mind, all these sensors are in the middle of the box, so some areas closer to the light bulb might be slightly warmer and some areas farther away might be colder, despite the fact that there's a fan running in order to maintain a steady temperature and to make sure that all the eggs are getting the right amount of oxygen. This thermocouple is extremely accurate in terms of identifying the temperature. Take a look over here. It goes one, two, three, four places past the decimal. That's why I'm using this in order to calibrate the temperature sensor on the Arduino, which isn't as accurate. I'm putting the temperature sensor in the center of the box because the eggs will be distributed across the entire incubator and I need to make sure that the temperature overall is safe for the eggs to hatch at. I've been using this thermometer along with the thermocouple in order to make sure that the temperature across the entire box is safe. What does this look like to you? That's right, this looks a lot like a spaceship. That's because this material, mylar, is commonly used on spaceships and satellites to reflect light and retain heat. We just got back from the farm and we got a bunch of eggs. And we got a lot of different types as well. So I'm going to put this into the incubator where it's going to stay for 21 days. You should check out inadu.org along with deepplastics.org. There you can learn more about science as well as find some STEM activities to do. Finally, please like, subscribe, and watch the other videos in the series. This is Anna Du, the Microplastics Girl.